appetite, sleep, hunger. Do you ever notice that the day after you have a bad night's sleep or no night's sleep, that you feel hungry, like insatiable hunger the whole rest of the day? Well, in today's episode, we're going to explore the science behind that. We're going to look at studies and research that show you why getting a bad night's sleep is not just bad for your overall health, but it's bad for your waistline and it's bad for your appetite. Go ahead and tune in. This is a podcast recording, so you don't even need to watch. Just listen in to this fascinating information. I'm Dr. Rita Marie Loscalzo, and I can't wait for you to share this information. Have you ever noticed that on days when you don't sleep well, you're hungry all day? I've noticed it myself and have observed that it happens to my clients as well. And I've noticed that it's not just a little extra hungry. Oh, no. It's insatiable appetite that doesn't seem to reduce even after I eat. For me, it makes intermittent fasting a big challenge. So why is this happening? Well, epidemiological evidence supports a link between sleep loss and obesity. In fact, kids who sleep less have a higher chance of being overweight or obese in the future. According to a study in the Journal of Sleep, back in 2008, children aged 2.5 to 6 years of age who slept less than 10 hours, 10 hours, had a 2.9 times higher risk of obesity than those who slept more than 11 hours. Now, that's not a huge difference, is it? And for us as adults, we might be thinking, well, 10 hours doesn't sound like sleep deprivation. But at that age, they need at least 11 hours. And that's a huge increase in the risk of obesity. There was another birth cohort that analyzed the relationship between sleep duration in children and body mass index in adulthood, showing that the kids who slept less had a greater BMI in adulthood. So what causes this and how should we advise our clients? Well, studies on the impact of poor sleep and insomnia on appetite have identified both hormonal and central brain changes that contribute to increased appetite after periods of decreased sleep. The link between decreased sleep and obesity seem to be related to neuroendocrine changes that are related to appetite disorders. There were results of experiments in healthy adult volunteers found that food intake increased during sleep deprivation. And part of the reason they speculated on that was that it provided the energy needed for the extra additional wakefulness, which caused them to be more hungry. But there's a lot more than that. So there's brain centers that influence appetite, and there's hormones that influence appetite. So let's take a look at how sleep affects these various areas. So let's just review the brain centers that influence appetite are the hypothalamus, right? The central control system, the brain stem, the nucleus accumbens, the ventral pallidium, mesolimbic dopamine system, and other areas that are considered reward centers. These are all involved in appetite control. Let's see how these guys are affected by lack of sleep. There's a whole bunch of hormones that control appetite. Some of these are controlled obviously by sleep and some of them, the connection hasn't really been found yet. We have ghrelin, leptin, cortisol, adiponectin, orexin, insulin, glucagon, amylin, CCK, CRF, which is corticotropin releasing factor, dopamine, and GLP-1 glucagon-like peptide one. So let's start with the hormones and let's look at the influence that they have when they're out of balance on appetite. So we'll start with the most obvious one, which is ghrelin. Ghrelin is produced by the stomach and its job is to trigger, hey, it's time to eat. When people are sleep deprived, their body produces significantly more ghrelin than usual resulting in an increased appetite. And I can attest to this one. Sleep deprived adults tend to have higher ghrelin levels, more hunger, and less of that feeling of fullness 
compared to adults who get seven to nine hours of sleep. Ghrelin also, this is a kicker, increases the preference for fatty and sweet foods and increases gastric motility, leading to that feeling of emptiness much quicker than if the ghrelin was not so high. Another hormone that's affected by sleep and also affects appetite is leptin. Good old leptin. It's secreted by the fat cells and it has the ability to tell the brain, hey, we're full. It's a satiation hormone. It suppresses appetite when you've had enough to eat. Insufficient sleep, guess what? It lowers leptin production, resulting in greater food consumption. In people with normal sleep, these two hormones, leptin and ghrelin, are balanced, right? They come on when they're supposed to, they turn off when they're supposed to, and we eat when we're hungry and stop eating when we're full. They regulate the feelings of hunger and appetite, but poor sleep alters ghrelin and leptin balance, and that leads to a change in appetite. And I don't know about you if you've experienced this, but I find that if I have nights where I don't sleep enough, I just am hungry all day. I'm thinking about food. I'll eat a meal, but I, it's just not satisfying enough and I need to eat more. At least I feel the need to eat more. And I also find that it's really hard to do my typical intermittent fasting where I feel the hunger. Yeah, I've been 16 hours without food, but it's not overwhelming. It's not like driving me the way it does if I've been deprived of sleep. Another hormone that affects the appetite and is affected by sleep big time is cortisol, right? We know that cortisol levels increase when we're stressed. Also, they go up when we're sleep deprived. And one of the results of cortisol is mobilization of stored glucose so that we get more glucose into the blood to provide us the fuel to run away from hungry tigers. But the problem with the mobilization of stored glucose, it doesn't break down fat generally it breaks down protein. So this results in an increase of appetite and then redistribution of fat stores to guess where, where we least want it is around the waist. So sustained high levels of cortisol can lead to intense cravings and result in binge eating. Not good, especially for our clients who are trying to maintain or lose the extra weight. Another hormone that has a lot of influence on appetite and also is influenced by sleep is adiponectin. Adiponectin is one of the good guys and sleep restriction results in a decrease in adiponectin levels. They're significantly lower in obese people compared to non-obese and have been found to be inversely related to type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular risk. That's in many studies, not all studies, but most show adiponectin is good for us, right? We want to have more adiponectin. Unfortunately, sleep interferes with it. It enhances fatty acid oxidation and reduces triglycerides. It stimulates the glucose to be uptaken by the muscle, which then, of course, keeps the glucose levels lower, which keeps the insulin levels lower. And we know that insulin, excess insulin stimulates appetite and also stimulates, guess what, that extra weight around the middle. Insulin, our favorite hormone, we've talked about that a lot. I call it my favorite hormone. I call it the queen of hormones. Its job is to lower blood glucose and it stimulates fat synthesis and storage. Sleep has a major effect on insulin and lack of sleep causes some serious imbalances in insulin. And we have a whole episode on the blood sugar and sleep interactions. So insulin, we want to keep that insulin level in the right range, in that lower range. When we look back, we can look at the lab testing. We want to keep insulin levels below five, like between two and five, really ideal there. And then we don't have that excess appetite all the time. Glucagon is another one that is affected by sleep. Insulin stores glucose. Glucagon releases glucose from store. Insulin is stimulated when the blood sugar goes up. Glucagon when the blood sugar goes down. 
The cool part about glucagon is the opposite of insulin. It actually increases satiety, meaning, hey, we eat a meal and then we feel good. So this insulin glucagon balance is super important as we discussed in the other episode. Another one is neuropeptide Y. Neuropeptide Y stimulates appetite and it's increased when we don't get enough sleep. There's a few others where the direct connection hasn't been seriously studied yet, but I'm going to be looking into that a lot more to just find out if there are other things that we can deal with and other things that we can control. But the main ones are the ones that we can actually help people to control, right? So getting enough sleep, the glucagon, the insulin, the cortisol, the ghrelin and leptin. So Oxytomolin modulin inhibits ghrelin secretion. It's an appetite related one, but we don't really have a lot of evidence yet as to what impact sleep has on it. It suppresses appetite and it slows down gastric emptying and stimulates insulin release after carbohydrate. Another one that's involved in appetite is orexin. Orexin, when it's high, promotes eating beyond satiety. We just don't get the signal like, okay, let's stop eating. And when they actually inject it into people, it stimulates food intake. It has to do with the excitatory synapses that it stimulates and blocking of the parasympathetic type of, of interactions. And when we block the orexin receptors, it reduces food intake and binge eating behavior. And this one's affected by sleep. There's another one called glucagon-like peptide one, and that induces satiety and increases postprandial insulin secretion. And a study on one night of sleep deprivation in healthy men showed that there was a shift in the GLP concentrations. So this is really an important set of hormones. There's a couple of others. Serotonin is linked with appetite control, but may or may not be affected by sleep. Yes, it can be because, you know, if we don't get enough sleep, all of our neurotransmitters go go wacky. But there's still a lot more research to be done on the direct effects of sleep deprivation. So let's look at some other areas. So that was the endocrine effects of low sleep and the effects on appetite. Well, let's look at how the brain is affected. So there's areas of the brain that are affected by lack of sleep, and these are areas that affect the appetite. So um, when we have disrupted functional activity within the frontal cortex, including areas like the anterior insula cortex, the lateral orbital frontal cortex, and anterior signate cortexes, this is widely to be considered a hallmark of sleep loss. So when these areas are affected, we don't make good appetite choices. These areas affect appetite and the signaling by helping us to make better choices. When we are influenced by the odor and the flavor of food and we're going for taste versus satiation, we end up having problems with overeating, overeating of high calorie, high fat foods that are not going to help overall with health. So compared to the resting state, sleep deprivation significantly reduced activities in all three of these areas. And as they did, food desire progressively increased. There was a study back in 2013 that reported that sleep deprivation significantly decreases activity in appetite evaluation regions within the frontal cortex and the insula. And it affected the food, quote unquote, desirability choices is how they worded it to such a significant level that people are just desiring weight gain, promoting high calorie foods after sleep deprivation and a decrease in desire for the low calorie, higher water content, higher nutritionally linked foods. The researchers in doing these studies linked the findings to a brain mechanism by which insufficient sleep might lead to obesity through diminished activity in these higher order 
evaluation regions, combined with excess subcortical responsivity in the amygdala, resulting in the selection of foods most capable of triggering weight gain. So we can see how the link between obesity and sleep deprivation is clearly rooted in the endocrine system and these high-level neurosystems. So when we compare sleep deprivation to the sleep and rested state, we find that reduced activity in all three of these areas, the anterior cingulate, the orbital frontal, and the anterior insula cortex, it increased the food desire. Both the amygdala and the ventral striatum have been strongly implicated in governing the motivation to eat. The amygdala has consistently demonstrated responsivity to food stimuli, while activity in the ventral striatum in response to foods accurately predicts immediate food intake, binge eating, and weight gain. There's still a lot more research to do on the appetite sleep deprivation front, but for now, the best advice you can give your clients especially those who struggle with weight and binge eating and appetite control, is to go to sleep. You've learned a lot in this series of podcasts about how to help your clients get better sleep. It's important for their overall brain function, for the blood sugar regulation, and appetite control, which inevitably leads to their weight. And so many people are struggling with their weight and they don't make the connection to sleep. They go, sleep, that's not important. Let's go on this diet. Let's deprive myself of food. What can I eat? How do I do this? But if you can get your clients to start sleeping better, using the techniques we've taught you here, you're going to get so, so, so much result better than just focusing on food. So be sure to download our free sleep guide at www.reinventhealthcare.com forward slash sleep. Check out the show notes page. I have some references for some of these articles on, you know, the real detailed stuff because it's hard to listen and maybe really relate and remember, but we have a lot of that in these articles. And if you want to go deeper, I'll share with you these resources. So download the free guide at reinventhealthcare.com forward slash sleep. And really keep in mind, you have the power to change people's lives. And the more you master the art of teaching and empowering patients and clients to use the power of nutrition and lifestyle to maximize and optimize their health, the greater success you're going to have in your practice, the more clients are going to be attracted to you because everybody's going to tell their friends and their family members, how good you are in helping. So until next time, shine on.